Justin Herbert being back at practice today, uh, according to Daniel Popper of The Athletic, uh, uh -huh. Justin did not have uh, cleats on. He had uh, sh running shoes or uh, something like that. He did not have cleats, and I think they only did seven on seven, no 11 on 11. So they're easing him back in. But, Eric, uh, is this, this should be positive news for the Chargers, isn't it, that they have number 10 back? Yeah, well, I guess the first thing I do is, is check, you know, Harbaugh's Gatorade bottle to see, like, you know, what's going on there. Um, and then the second thing I would say is it's obviously great news. I'm glad he, he heard music or, you know, um, whatever was going on with, you know, the what's happening there at, 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 the, at the practice facility. Um, but I'm interested to see how they manage Herbert over the next two weeks, like in terms of his reps and how they ramp him up. Um, and, and how they continue to kind of, you know, use Easton and, and Perez and, and other quarterbacks to kind of get ready for the season. But I, I would be interested to see, you know, how Justin's moving over the next couple of weeks and does he look kind of like his, like his old self. Eric, there is no other quarterbacks. It is now just Luis Perez, Easton Stick, and Justin Herbert. That's right, because Max was cut, correct? Yeah, yeah, he was cut today, so... And there, there was were three, and then there was three. There should really be just one because uh, <laughs> they are in trouble if Justin Herbert does not play a game. And I told I mean, Gilbert Easton Stick, if he is cut, I mean, he's gonna find a home. Oh well, yeah, like, like you mentioned, Tom Tedesco, is a, who gave him that record of most inactive games with the, with the same team and never get waived or cut. I don't know what the hell he did there <laughs> to earn that record. I'm sure it's a record, Eric. I, don't, I haven't looked into it, but the most inactive game streak has got to be from Easton Stick. It was like four years, right? Something like that. Wow, that's pretty strong. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta look it up. But to, to you know, get my points here. And and first of all, if Harbaugh wants to hear music, you can play music at during practice. Harbaugh, you don't like music apparently. For when Herbert returns, he, he has to have some kind of like hallelujah and like a spotlight. You know, go go down on Justin That'd Herbert. Been you, awesome if that you happened. You need him like that. You need the the son of Odin to shout out Dan Ooh. and Dago there. But uh, you know, I, I guess you know if if everything falls on Herbert, like it, it kind of worries me a little bit. Like it kind of feels like a top heavy team. You got to have everything right. You got to make sure, you know, th this guy stays healthy or you're screwed. But, you know, what can you do, Eric, at this point to get a backup because it's so late in the game? You know, people, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to believe it, but I was, I was in Denver for my training camp tour and everybody was hyping up Zach Wilson there. So maybe you go trade for Zach Wilson or like Fernando mentioned, go get a DTR from Cleveland. Do you kind of search the trade market or you just roll the dice like Harbaugh is kind of doing right now and say Herbert's going to be healthy? We'll worry about the rest later. No, I, I definitely think during final roster cuts, you you monitor the 31 other teams and and see who might shake loose, you know, who you can claim on waivers and, and add. Uh, and if they're better than what you have, which I think there's a good possibility of that happening, uh, you bring them in. You know, whether it, it's, it's Zach Wilson or... You know, somebody like like uh, Adrian Martinez that played in the UFL uh, was the MVP it's the competing for the third job mm -hmm. with the Jets. Um, there's a lot of names out there. You, just, you know, uh, Hunley, I think we've talked about him a little bit. Uh, you know, P.J. Walker competing for the third job with the Seahawks. Um, I just think you look and try to, you know, find what the best fit is in terms of maybe you get lucky and, and you find somebody that, you know, is familiar with your scheme that can come in and, and – and be a, either a second or third guy. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I think the Chargers are like most teams. Like, if the starter goes down, you're probably in trouble. You know, you probably don't, don't have a chance to reach the postseason. If Mahomes goes down, I mean, do we think Carson Wentz is going to lead the Chiefs to the Super Bowl? So I, I was going to say, Fernando's high on Carson Wentz. Well, Fernando's <laughs> high on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I don't see Carson Wentz leading them to, you know, the playoffs. Sorry. If anybody, if, if you work with Sean McVay, Fernando's going to love that quarterback. That's all it is for him. Baker, I, hey, I, I told y'all, Baker Mayfield last year, and look, like, I, yeah, if he were, yeah. He's hyping I, up Sam Darnold, too. Or, been watching or, Stetson Bennett Bacos, in preseason? No, 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 no. I don't watch Stetson <laughs> Bennett. Gilbert already knows my assessment of Stetson he's Bennett. He's not good. The way he, uh, the way he's he not prepares the one. Pre, the way he prepares pregame for the game uh, i think he pregame <laughs> a little too much uh but uh but no i i mean yeah i think i think being in that system i think being with sean mcveigh last year could have helped carson 
I think, uh, yeah, no, I, I, but Andy Reid would just simplify and, and schema around Carson and, and try and help him out. But I agree with what you're saying in that sense. So let's just say in a weird world, they go with uh, whoever is left on the team. I don't believe that's going to happen because I think Harbaugh's too smart. I think you, I think Huntley would probably be their best bet if we're going somebody off of that system because he's been on the Ravens before he has that connection. Let's just say, in a weird scenario, they're going to go with one of the two, Easton or Luis. What route would you kind of go with that? Well, I think it would be Easton just okay. because he's familiar with, with Justin um, and familiar with the organization. And, you know, I, I think it's important for the organization to have somebody in there that can help Justin prepare for the week. And Easton has done that, you know, for, for several years. Um, I Five. think Louis, Louise would be better thrown into a game because he's played more football than Easton has played. You know, when you look at how many reps he's gotten in the UFL, and obviously the UFL is not the, the NFL, but when you watch Louise in there, he's comfortable. You know, he's throwing with anticipation. He has command of the huddle. He's getting guys where they need to be, even though he hasn't been running that offense for very long. The offense just seems to run smoother from – from my eyes, watching Louise versus Easton. Um, and, you know, I, I think he's a more accurate quarterback, too. I think he puts the ball where he needs to put it, and Easton is missing on a lot of throws. That said, I, I feel like Easton is a better athlete, and usually when your backup's in there, you have backup offensive linemen, and they're going to have to run around a little bit. I know when I covered Mike Holmgren, he, he used to always say, he wanted a more athletic backup, and that's why he always had Seneca Wallace because usually when oh, you're back in there, the legend of Iowa State before Brock Purdy was Seneca yep. Wallace. Yep. Um, and so he always wanted a more athletic guy that could run around a little bit because usually the protection was going to be very good and you needed some some guy that could create. And so that kind of lends, you know, to maybe Easton, you know, being the guy that you can throw in there. But you also have to run your offense to fit – his skill set, and I didn't really feel like Roman was was doing that. I did feel like he did that last week. Yep, you saw more called runs, you saw more, you know, movement of the pocket, um, and you saw some some bubble screens and some short stuff to kind of give Easton some confidence, which I think helped him. He yeah, had that one drive you. until you promote the one yard line, just but that, that was a good yes. drive overall. <laughs> it was a good drive. <laughs> just, just, just keep the ball, Easton. <laughs> he didn't finish, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, let me ask you uh, real quick, Eric. Just don't you feel like maybe the UFL should be something that teams can send their backup quarterbacks to? I mean, they would get the reps. Yeah, then maybe they get hurt, but you could just, I mean, in a sense, you could go get another guy. But I feel like maybe that's where the UFL and the NFL should kind of partner up, where they send their backups. And not everybody's going to want to send their backups, but you send a guy like Easton to go get those reps that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You go send NFL guys that you think, oh, that's my backup. But you know what? Maybe being in the in the spring ball, maybe that'll help them kind of elevate and get those reps. Do you feel like maybe that's something that the NFL should be doing uh, and teams? I think uh, they're working towards that. I think ultimately the UFL would like to get to that point, kind of like we have with NFL Europe when you saw guys like Kurt Warner and John Kitna you know, they were, they were still with their teams, but they would go play uh, in NFL Europe and get those reps. And it really helped kind of, uh, you know, them ascend in terms of their development. Um, so we may see that, you know, in four to five years. I think ultimately they, they want those franchises to be bought by, you know, people within those markets, you know, ownership groups. And then they'd like the NFL to be involved and be able to send guys down and get those reps and, and still have their rights and they could come back up and 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 play for their their whatever teams they belong to. Hey uh, wow. Eric, I'm up for getting Adrian Martinez with the Chargers. You get an Adrian Martinez and a Luis Perez, man. A lot of Latino names there in the quarterback but uh, room Let's for do the it. Chargers. 